Hallelujah. So we thank God for being here today. How many got your Bibles? Amen. Amen. If you don't have a Bible, get with somebody that does have a Bible. Hallelujah. It is not my desire to be before you very long. Amen. As we say, Hallelujah. But we definitely want to speak with the Lord's place on our hearts. Amen. Amen. How many of you need a word from God today? Amen. Every day, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> They're like, God, give me something every day, bless God. This day, i got to have my daily bread. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. How many enjoyed Mr. King last week? Amen. Awesome, awesome uh, man of God. Um, many of you were shocked you didn't know he was a prison, right? A lot of people were saying, I didn't, I didn't know that. He's a prison for me. But look at what God can do. Right. In a life of a murderer, amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we can't be so quick to judge somebody and say, you know what, you're dying and you're going to hell. You don't know what God's going to do. Right. So our position at the church is to do what? Pray, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. I feel good this morning. Amen. God is good. <laughs> amen. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And you all know that's a familiar text of scripture. We're going to try to. Go through some of the principles that the, the Spirit of the Lord gave me. Amen. And I'll just read the like the scriptures out to you. If you have something, you can write them down. You can go and check them out. A little bit later, we don't get to them. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And when I'm sitting here saying it, my Bible slows. Let me open it up. Amen. <laughs> Bless God. Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. And it reads as thus. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. All right. Amen? Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of times we talk about renewing your mind, we talk about renewing the mind and getting the mind renewed and how it is a continued thing, it's a, it's a continued process, that's something that has to be done every day. Amen? And, and I just want to kind of... We're going to talk about the renewing of the mind, but we're also going to talk about the dangers of not renewing the mind. Amen? Amen? Mm-hmm. Not renewing the mind. And what are the benefits of renewing the mind? Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't a punchline, no way. Amen. <laughs> but we're going to talk about renewing the mind to be able to see the kingdom. Amen? To be able to see the kingdom. Now, we know in John... 3 and 3, Christ said, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He's saying, basically he's saying, listen, you know, except you're born again, you ain't going. Amen. You won't be able to, to, to fix your eyes on the things that, that the Father has prepared for you. Amen. But what we want to talk about, we want to talk about seeing the kingdom in a different, in a, in a different perspective, not so much in the perspective of seeing Christ when he comes. I mean, that's the ultimate thing. But ultimately, seeing God in everyday life. Mm -hmm. Seeing the kingdom of God in everyday life. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So, Romans says, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says that we got to renew our mind. It says that we cannot be trans, we cannot be conformed to this world, but we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and we talked about renewing the mind. Let me just ask somebody real quick. What does renewing your mind mean? Taking the bad out, trying to stay positive, Sister Court? Changing your thoughts. Yes. Good answers. Awesome answers. I'm sorry. Being more open to others' opinions. Being more open to others' opinions. Never answered. I like that. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. 
Getting it back to the way God designed it. Getting it back to the way God designed it. Man, y'all so I need to sit down and let y'all preach. Amen. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Amen. But those are all right answers. Amen. Another thing, when you look at the renewing of the mind, it means renovation. Mm. And when you do a renovation, most of the times, who are people that have done renovations and fixed things and things like that in here before? Minister Coleman, he's, probably, he's, he's in a renovation process right now. Hallelujah. So is it, is it safe to say, Sister Mason, is it safe to say that in the renovation process, sometimes things have to be gutted out? Yes. Yes. So that you can start on a fresh foundation? And see, that's one of the things he's telling us. He's saying, listen, you got to be renewed in your mind. So in other words, as we come into Christ, then our mind has to start changing. Our thought processes have to start changing. The way that we handle things has to start changing. So there has to be a renovation. How do I do the renovation, Pastor Mason? Through the Word of God. The Word of God says that the Word is powerful. Quick. Sharper than any two-edged sword. You ever read the Word one day and you just felt like, my God, I need to close this. My flesh don't like it right now. Anybody ever felt like that? The word just, just stuck you real quick to the yoke and say, James, ah. We close this. I don't feel that today. Oh, God. Let me go to the Psalms. The Psalms are encouraging and uplifting. They're not after my sins. Ah, but yes, they are. David said, creating me a clean heart. A clean heart. And renewing me the right. right spirit. Anybody had the wrong spirit before? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. About a thing? Mm-hmm. Had the wrong spirit, had a, had a nasty attitude. Mm-hmm. I think we talked about that this morning. Somebody came with the wrong spirit this morning. Who delivered that? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. David said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew, renew. Get that old nasty spirit out of me. And create a new spirit within me. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we're talking about renewing of the mind. The renewing of the mind, the renovation of the mind, tearing down some old thought processes. Also, we've got to begin to submit to God. We've got to begin to submit to the Holy Spirit that God gives us. Amen. And you can't override the Holy Spirit. you got to listen to Him. He's there to help. Didn't Jesus say He was a helper? He's there to help you. We've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. So, what are the dangers? And before I go into that, also, Matthew 16, uh, 15 and 17, kind of gives us a little example of seeing the kingdom through God's eyes. Amen? And what that's basically talking about, you don't have to go there right now, but when you get an opportunity, you can go there. Um, but what it's basically saying is, God, Jesus is saying to Peter, he's saying, listen, Peter, he was asking the question, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, you are the son of God. Amen. And he told Peter, he said, listen, he said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But my father, which is in heaven, had to reveal this to you. How many of you had a revelation? His eyes were open. He was able to see something. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Amen. So what are the dangers of not having your mind renewed or not continuing the renewal process of our minds. Because how many know that's the first place the enemy comes is your mind. He don't start with your flesh. He starts with a thought. Amen? So he doesn't make you do anything. He gives you the suggestion and we obey. Or, or not obey. Hallelujah. So let's go to uh, Romans chapter 8. Verse 6. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Bless God. Continuing to renew your mind. Our minds. Hallelujah. Whoever has that can read it. We're going to make this interactive today. Bless God. You ain't going to sleep on me. (laughs) (laughs) You just got to finish bucket in the spirit. No! Wake up! Hallelujah. Amen. Who has it? Whoever has it can read. Read it loud and strong. 
Amen. And verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. Now, that wasn't originally on. I just had to throw that in there because it was just lining up. Amen. Amen. But one of the things, as, as I was beginning to pray, and I said, Lord, you know, okay, so now we're talking about renewing the mind. We're talking about the dangers of renewing the mind. And I started writing, you know, sometimes for those of us that, that, that write messages out of things like that, I started writing and I started putting down numbers and stuff because I started to go through different, different things. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, no. He said, before you do that, let's get one thing. I said, okay, what is it? He said, carnality. I said, okay, is it carnality one of those things that happens when you don't renew your mind? He said, check this out. Okay. Hallelujah. Carnality has children. Amen? First of all, let's look at what carnality means. When we looked at carnality, it meant, in, in the uh, Greek, it was sark. And what it basically means is fleshly, external, human, Basically, the desires and the cares of what's going on externally. Amen? So, when we looked up carnality, that's what we got in. And I begin to look at Romans 8, and it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Why? Because this, the carnal mind is enmity towards God. And is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be a deed. He said, indeed. When you say indeed, you know you're throwing something on there. I said, hey, they got good cheesecake down the street? Indeed. <laughs> I'm going. He said, indeed. <laughs> so anyway, when we look at carnality, what are some of the children that carnality has? Some of the seeds of carnality, some of the offspring of carnality. One of the things is blindness in the spirit. Amen? Now, I'm not talking about sitting somewhere. You got your feet resting there, so I ain't going to mess with you. Um, I'm not talking about sitting somewhere. You know, we say, we see spiritually and things like that. I, I'm not talking about sitting somewhere and, and you just... Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see God. I see all things happening. Yes, God. No! <laughs> That's for any extreme people. I'm sorry. Maybe he ain't in here. Hallelujah. But anyway, blindness in the spirit. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Whoever has that can read it. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Blindness in the spirit. Now, when we talk about Seeing in the spirit, you also have to be able to hear in the spirit. Amen? you got to hear what the spirit is saying. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I've never heard of God, Pastor Mason. Well, you know, God talks to you through his word, too. Amen. Amen. That's one of the most significant ways. Amen. Amen? So we got to be able to hear, too. So somebody can read uh, Hebrews chapter... 5 verse 11. Amen. So also another, another translation says that it's dull of hearing. Dull of hearing. Sometimes the carnal mind can come in and cause you to not understand or even see what God is doing. Mm, wow. Amen. It'll cause your it'll cause your hearing to be dull or unfruitful. Because when you're dealing with the carnal, carnal deals with what's in front of you. Come on. Amen? Has anybody ever had life speak to you stronger at one point in time than the promise of God in your life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Yeah. Come on, honey. I'm talking about natural things like a bill maybe that came up. Uh, a situation, maybe somebody got sick or something like that, and or maybe you got sick, and.